afternoon, it's Adil Fazal, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Friday's trading session, the uh, 13th of October 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and Market Updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so let's look at the markets as we stand um, at present. We have the uh, Asian markets overnight, Nikkei up, uh, an impressive 200 points again. So the Nikkei certainly has been roaring as of late. Uh, given the fact that Mr. Abe certainly seems to have a uh, overwhelming majority uh, compared to his opponents. I think he's got two thirds and obviously QE policy will continue. Now looking at the weekly chart here of the uh, Nikkei at the moment, you can see we're breaking out here, broken past 21,000 now uh, in terms of the monthly chart. We also had Mr. Nick Leeson tweeting as well saying that it's, uh, the Nikkei has gone back to where is it? <laughs> where Bearings Bank actually went under, so that's interesting. Okay, so uh, around this 21,000 level, uh, if we go back to, you can see 1995, potentially even 1991. I can't, I can't vaguely remember. I think it was towards the end of, um, nine, I think it was the 90s, wasn't it? I think, it, yes, when Bearings Bank went under. So, uh, actually, let me just quickly look at uh, when that happened. So, Bearings Bank, when did it go bankrupt? Let's have a look. Okay, so uh, Barings Bank was a British merchant bank based in London and world's second oldest merchant bank after Berenberg Bank. It was founded in 1760 and was owned by a German originated Bering family of merchants and bankers. The bank collapsed in 1995 after suffering losses of 827 million, 1.3 billion, resulting from poor, poor speculative investments, primarily in futures contracts conducted by an employee named Nick Leeson working at his office in Singapore. Interesting, okay. So 1995, let's go back to here, 1995, we've got 1997 here, and 1996 hit a peak of around 22,740. So whether he was loaded short, long, I, I can't remember now. Okay, I have to watch the film again. Okay, so interesting, interesting scenario. Nikkei certainly pushing high, and that certainly is helping global sentiment, global, uh, obviously, your markets as well. Okay, so that's the status quo. And Nikkei certainly ripping, roaring higher on the back of, obviously, QE being... Uh, maintained given the fact that Mr. Abe uh, and it certainly seems like liquidity certainly is a plenty. Okay, uh, Asian markets higher as well. You have the Shanghai and the Hang Seng higher as well after Chinese exports and imports certainly came in better than expected, which in turn helps obviously global markets as well in terms of growth. Okay, so that's the status quo there. In terms of uh, economic numbers uh, for uh, Europe today, we have uh, German inflation coming in line, uh, Italian inflation has just come out as well, more or less in line. And now we're waiting retail sales from the US. We want CPI data, so very inflation oriented there. Okay, uh, watch out for that in terms of, and again, you are expecting a move in the dollar index as well. I'll certainly do it a separate US dollar, US market video, and I'll, I'll give you an insight there. In terms of the rest of the day, then um, let's have a look. You are looking forward to, or well, should we not say looking forward to, or keeping, out, well, keeping an eye out for Mr. Uh, ECB President Vit, uh, Vito Constacio. Uh, then you got Evans, Kaplan, and Mem Powell, so watch out for that. Okay, it should be interesting to see how the markets react there. We have had Mr. Seibert from Germany, certainly pouring cold water on a special potential deal for the UK, which in turn obviously has led the uh, sterling high yesterday, which in turn caused the Euro GBP to collapse. Euro GBP and the FTSE 100 certainly have almost 100% correlation at the moment. So those of you that are trading the FTSE 100, keep an eye on the Euro GBP if you do want to look for direction. So uh, again, you, you can see here we had a bounce in the Euro GBP morning. Lo and behold, we had a bounce in the FTSE 100 too. So just watch out there. Yesterday I was actually short the Euro GBP and the FTSE. Uh, I got stopped out on this spike only for it to reverse sharply. Arr, very frustrating, okay? Either way, that's how the market works, okay? In terms of the market starts this um, uh, today, let's have a look. European markets, FTSE is down. Uh, obviously in the back of sterling strength. German DAX and CAC certainly lower as well. Uh, I will not say lower, more or less flat, okay? Uh, the reason why European markets are under pressure today is because of the... Uh, and the news release with regards to uh, the ECB cutting QE down to 30 billion. Okay, uh, so again, that certainly is a risk and negative article. Let's look at the technical picture now. G German DAX certainly is uh, uh, holding that 13,000 level, failing to push higher. Okay, 60 minute chart. Obviously, you've got double top, triple top, call it what you want. You have resistance. Daily chart, obviously, we have broken out, so you have to respect that to a large extent. But is it a fake out? That's the question, especially with the ECB cutting back on QE. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Uh, in terms of French CAC, let's look at the French CAC again. This is an index that I'm sure on, so let's declare my intention in advance. We do still have the unfilled gap at 35405. I'm fully aware of that, uh, but looking for a bear flag scenario on the daily chart, especially given the fact that you are quoting QE. We've got euro back above 1.18 now. Again, that certainly is risk negative, so bear that in mind. 
60 minute jar of my perspective is certainly negative lower highs okay and 10 minute chart you're certainly hitting an intraday double top there now looking to potentially reverse and looking for weakness on the euro stocks okay looking for a move back down to here uh 5350 then you have uh 5340 you've got uh, that's the zone that i'll be looking at 5340 and then potentially even lower back down here to 5330 so that's a zone that i'll be focusing on okay then so uh, in terms of FTSE 100 let's look at the FTSE 100 now daily chart at the moment you can clearly see we're into resistance this is the uh, the uh, turbulent zone on the FTSE okay one would not want to uh, obviously open up more uh, long positions there in terms of the uh, uh, 60 minute chart you clearly have a HNS formation the FTSE 100 the HNS target on the downside just to clarify let's have a look HNS target you have a pivot high of uh, 7565 minus your neckline which is currently seen around 7525 okay so you've got 40 point move there so you're looking at 7385 on the downside so watch out for 7385 for a target in the FTSE which more or less brings it down to here around 7390 zone that sort of logically makes sense then obviously we could flush lower to 7460 so like I said watch out below a uh, 10 minute chart on the FTSE 100 certainly has rejected we've gapped lower the gap remains open bear that in mind at uh, 7556 uh, we have rejected uh, the high at 7545 market obviously it's pushed lower we've hit a pivot low of uh, 7520 okay certainly bounce from there again you're looking at potentially testing that 7520 zone again so again watch out below that's really my uh, summation okay right so FTSE 100 high h &S formation looking at 7385 that will be my target on the FTSE at the moment unless something changes and the Brexit roundabout obviously goes on right in terms of last but not least looking at euro stocks now okay euro stocks daily chart clearly into resistance looking for to move lower uh, 60 minute chart I'm looking at focus on this h &S formation my target down the downside is 3560 okay 10 minute chart at the moment uh, you've obviously broken through gap fill resistance uh, you are looking at a potential dual stop here on the 10 minute chart if we break through that then you are looking at testing that 3620 above if not then obviously we're looking to potentially close the gap below uh, we've still failed to close that gap the gap is left open around 3605 uh, we do have uh, obviously potential support below as well so let's see how the uh, euro stocks plays out so that's the status quo okay understood okay i think that's a good wrap then in terms of europe please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the bonus goodbye now.